Hello, thank you very much for coming to this week's webinar. Um, my name is Andrew Talbot and I'm Director of Financial Planner at Avrio Wealth. And we're going to talk about how to retire as an expat today. And um, probably cover um, how to plan for retirement, um, some of the factors affecting retirement incomes, um, especially as an expat where the um, taxes, the countries, the lifestyle is probably slightly different to how you do a conventional retirement plan if you were just in one country. So we'll go on to um, some of those factors affecting it. We will also go through a live case study, um, at which point you can show some of the, um, some of the reasons and some of these issues and how they uh, affect the income um, 10, 20 years down the line. And what about if you add in certain other um, milestone goals or changing expenses or changing income? We'll, we'll go through that in detail. So, it's Avrio Wealth. We build it, which is the financial planning. You fund it, which is investment management. So we get involved in that. And we ensure that you stick to it, which is behavioral coaching um, and understanding how behavioral finance has a massive impact on people's end outcomes. It is, it is really huge. Always remember this. Uh, the things that you should focus on are the things that matter and the things that you can control. So everything else is generally just noise, uh, including investment markets, um, what's happening today, politics, etc. Can you control them? If not, do they matter? Not focus on them, the things that matter and things that do, you can control. Right. So how to retire as an expat couple of options to think about. Do you retire to another country? Do you retire to your home country? Do you split your retirement to two different countries, to two, two different countries, um, which I think is becoming more and more um, of a choice now, where as an expat, you've probably been in multiple different countries. You've got a great experience and understanding of how they work. And sometimes you think, well, actually, I wouldn't mind retiring to that particular area, or I'd like to come back three months a year or six months a year. Um, as someone says, you follow the, follow the sun around the world or follow the 23 degrees, which is apparently meant to be the most ideal um, climate to look, to, to live in. So I think splitting your time in, in different countries becomes more and more of an issue. The factors that affect the retirement, your health um, or your access to good health systems, Obviously, the income, currency. Um, if we talked about that point three, where you're splitting your retirement to two different countries or even three, then you're going to have these different currencies. Tax. What is the tax position in the country that you're going to retire to? What is the tax position in another country that you might live in? Property. You need somewhere to live. Are you going to rent? Are you going to purchase holiday home? Um, or are you going to sell your main residence or are you going to live off the uh, rental income and then travel? Um, probably as an expat, you have traveled probably quite extensively and therefore may want to continue that um, into your later years. You may also have children that may be brought up in the international um, space and will have or go to international schools and will have friends that live all over the world. And they would probably say, well, actually, I wouldn't mind going to university in Australia or America um, or even somewhere in Europe um, where she might be living in a completely different location. Seeing to the future. Now, this we think is incredibly important because it's one of the assumptions that you need to think about when it comes to the retirement. And a lot of retirement is about assumptions. Um, so how much do you need is always the first one. Um, a lot of people in their early 30s, late 40s, or even 50s, certain 60s, really just do not know how much you're going to need for retirement. And there's different calculations that you can do to, to hit that. It could be a percentage of income, it could be based on um, expenses, or it could just be an arbitrary figure. What are your expenses? Again, we call them future liabilities. They're expenses that you're going to have to pay into the future. Um, 
These could be holidays. They could be changing your car every few years. They could be um, such milestone ones as giving away um, assets or investments to next generation or third generation. Um, it could be uh, buying that holiday home uh, or even a case of, okay, what are my basic expenses in order to retire? So you have to think about these. Unforeseen events. Um, some of the hard things to think about are tax changes. Um, we've got uh, an issue probably now, which is the COVID-19. That is a very much an unseen event. Um, restricting travel, restricting what people want to do. And then health cover. We talked about health cover in the previous slides and having access to great health insurance, health insurance or also health um, system especially when you get into your really later years, um, becomes quite a, a priority we find for, for retirees. Um, you could insure with the health insurance, but this will cost money and it is likely to go up consistently, um, not necessarily in line with inflation. And then the, the last thing to think about is the long-term care. Um, if you're into your 80s and 90s, then um, issues such as dementia, not being able to look after yourself become more and more of a factor. Um, you may find that you need to go into a, a nursing home or you may need to have help to help you. This will cost money. And sometimes this is what we tend to add as an assumption into it later on. It's like, well, how much is this going to cost? How is this going to be funded? And then we talked about the flights around the world to see, see the children or grandchildren. So we, um, we think it should be multiple streams of income. I think that's a good, a good start, mainly because you're not putting that old cliche eggs into one basket about income coming from one particular source. So have different sources um, of income. This means that you're not necessarily reliant on it um, and you can predict certain sources and you can predict um, some sources might be a little bit more variable. So you can have cash, cash in the bank, um, when it comes to a portfolio structure, generally we're not keen on having cash because it just gets eroded by inflation and your purchasing power is decreasing every year that inflation erodes that cash. So cash should be for near-term expenses um, and a good barometer would be to say one or two years expenses, annual expenses as cash, um, and then the rest should be invested in a varied degree of portfolios or assets. Um, rental property becoming more and more of a um, stream of income. You have to remind yourself that what, what will that look like? How much do you have to get involved in looking after that rental income? How guaranteed is it? You might have a period where tenants move out, therefore your income is going to decrease. Uh, a small business. Um, a lot of people are starting to say, well, what if I fund a small business? It can give me an income. And we do this in our, um, after, in our case study, actually. We'll go on to a small business. Um, Part-time work, not necessarily mean that in you retire. You retire from, <clears throat> from your work in life. A lot of people just say, I'm retiring from my current job, and then I'm going to find another source of employment. There may be something that's uh, a little bit more rewarding to yourself, keeps you occupied uh, into, the re into retirement years. Um, but instead of working five days a week, 60, 70 hours a week, you can actually just do a couple of days a week and 20 hours a week in order to keep your uh, mental health, to keep you fit and to provide a level of income. And governments and social security, they, they are still around. They do still pay state pensions, social security payments. And then we've got the conventional pension, which is generally where it all started from. Um, you worked for a company and then you paid into a pension scheme. And then on a certain date, you retire from that company and then they pay your pension until the day that you died. But I think taking overall all of those different income sources and actually other income sources as well, if you, if you have them, to build this income. And there is a concept called tax nomad. Uh, it's becoming harder and harder, but it's just becoming non-tax resident in a number of different countries. Um, you have to select the country. You have to understand what the tax position is in that country. Um, and how long you can stay before they start charging you. It used to be sort of 183 days in each country. 
um, or it could be like three months in each country before you became a tax resident. That is becoming harder and harder to achieve. Um, and as the changes come into tax systems, it, is become, it becomes, I wouldn't say impossible because there are some um, countries around the world that are very low tax or indeed no tax, um, but it's how your visa status or your resident status will allow you to live there. Um, and why it's becoming harder, CRS, uh, acronym is common reporting standards and it's a freedom of information that is flowing between um, tax authorities around the world so if i was earning an income in singapore it'd be reported to the local tax authorities but then if i was living in the uk or the us or australia then that information would flow between between those tax authorities therefore me trying to avoid tax um, becomes almost impossible to do So goals and financial planning. We said at the start that the financial plan is the most important part. So define your, obje your objectives, your time horizon, your risk profile, your savings rate, your investment risk, and your, and your monitoring. Each of these will have a different assumption. And we'll go on to how these assumptions can change. But it should always start with this goal. It's like, OK, how much do I need? How long am I going to need to fund this for? How am I going to structure the portfolio in order to do this? And then what assumptions am I going to give to investment performances, savings rates, or even taxes? So let me just change the screen. So this is a case study in how we do it. Okay, so we have a quite a conventional timeline along the bottom, which is uh, overseas, a new business, an active retirement, and then a retirement, and then we've got a bit of a slowdown after that. Um, we have a couple of people in this. Let's have a look at who they are. Um, we have Steve, Karen, and then the two kids, David and Sally. So Steve is 55 and Karen is 53. Um, and then we've got some income that they have, got a new business, and I'll come on to some of these differences of why we've got it. They're, they're living in Singapore. They've got some savings and investments, uh, and a bit of cash, general investment accounts and shares. Um, they've got some properties, probably where they get most of their income from, a couple of old schemes, state security or state pension, um, a few bits of debt relating to their rental properties. Uh, and then we've got some expenses going into it. So what we end up having is what we call a cash flow forecast. And where do you have these categories? Every column represents an income level. So they've got their total income. And then the black line represents their total need and their basic needs. So their expenses is basically the black line. Um, and you can have basic expenses, which is living, and then you have to think about what do we do on top of that? Do we have luxury? Do we have leisure? Do we have milestone? And we start to put those type of things in. If we look at what they're trying to plan to do, they're going to stay overseas for a while, but they want to buy a holiday home at age 57. They then want to start, um, start a business. So Steve wants to start a business. So you can see the change in, in, in the category at that point, or the change in lifestyle, life stage. Um, and then they'll get into, say, active retirement. Steve and Karen want to retire, and then they might sell this business in order to see whether they can fund the particular retirement. Um, they want to sell their main home. Uh, they might want to give some gifts, and then they're going to start to slow down, which is probably a change in, the, in them how much they're going to ex they spend. And then we've assumed some mortality dates, which is age 90 for Steve. Um, sorry, age 90 for both of them. Um, and you can change, we can change that around to say, okay, what if it was a little bit earlier? Um, maybe you look through the family's history and say, well, actually, generally the family doesn't, it won't last that long. Or you might say, well, actually, my family has quite a longevity. So therefore, I need to plan this to 100. Um, or do we plan long-term care? So we're looking at all these factors involved in them. We then have to put some um, values to some of these goals. So we don't have retirement, 
So we're going to say, we're going to select a, um, a goal now, and we're going to go retirement goal. Um, and basic needs, we're going to say 50,000 per year is what they, they want to, to do. Okay. So timing wise, probably going to start when they retire and it's going to end when on mortality. So if we look at, at that as a particular goal, he can still, he can still fund this 100% for it. Okay. When we go into um, the events, you see they're not going to run out of money at all. And if we have a look, look at insights, we can say, well, what's their spending capacity going to be in retirement? So how much can they, can they spend? So we, they want to do 50,000, but actually what they could do is 96,000. So we could show that actually they can spend a lot more than what, um, what they, they think that amount is. So it helps them with that, that retirement. And then Steve and Karen might go, well, actually, we wouldn't mind retiring a little bit earlier. Okay, what if we, um, what if we move the retirement date a little bit earlier? And we're going to try and sell that business a lot earlier. And there's a figure on that. Okay, what is that, what's that going to look like now? So they've retired a couple of years earlier. What's their spending capacity? That should decrease slightly because they haven't got such an extra amount. So it's decreased by an extra £3,000 annually just be retiring a year earlier. They might find that actually we wouldn't mind taking this active retirement, at which point they're going to do some holidays and saying, right, can we, let's take advantage of the fact that we're young at heart. Uh, we have um, the energy to go and see their two kids who are probably living in a different part of the world before we get into that point, we're going to have to slow down, um, namely because of health. So a lot of it is just playing about with it and adding, adding stuff into it. One of the things to always think about, and I talked about this before, was the assumptions. And this is huge. Um, if I change the inflation rate and suddenly put that up to 3%, uh, and their savings growth rate down to two, and even their investment rates to, to come down, you could, it will see how much this is going to change when it comes to what they can spend in retirement. So their amounts they could, they'll start to earn will, will decrease, and there was a slight change in the values there, where actually it's come, it's come down. So they need to start spending more. And actually, let's rerun it and see what that what that has done just by changing the inflation rate. So you really have to look at inflation rate and say, okay, what is that? What's that going to mean? See, we had 93, it's now down to 84 just by changing the inflation rate. So when we're building retirement, having these what ifs is extremely important to understand, um, okay, what about if there are changes in the future? And we talked about the unforeseen events in the previous slide. One of those is inflation rate being higher or being lower than, than what it is. And what that, what's that going to mean to your retirement? <clears throat> so always changing the, the plan. And we do this every year when we do our, well, our annual reviews. We're saying, okay, what, what, what changes are going to come up? How is this going to affect you? Um, how, can we, how can we make this, this better? If we add some sort of further changes into it, and we'll say, actually, their goals have now changed. What they want to do is retire on 100,000 because they've seen this. We change that figure and say, okay, when are you going to run out of money if you're going to do that? And actually, the red has now started to appear. So they're going to run out of money at age 74 and 72 just because they're spending so much before that. So it's a case of, okay, if you're going to run out of money, how much do you need to generate in order to get that, um, get that capital figure in order to not to, not to, not to go into the red. Um, and we, so if we calculate it, they're 49% away from this, this amount. Okay. Um, what they could do is sell their business. And I put an arbitrary figure of 250,000 in there of selling their business. But if I change that to 500, let's see what that, what that does. It just means that maybe they've got an extra couple of years where they can, re they can spend that amount of money. And actually when they run out of money, it's now 78 and 76. 
is the ages. So just by selling their business. So if they come into a point where they've done their business and they've changed it, they're like, well, how much do I need in order to fund my retirement? So we can help with that figure to determine what that's what what is required in order to make sure that they're they're not going to run out of cash. Um, and we do these what ifs all the time. Um, we have a lot of things of saying to clients come to us and say, well, I don't know how long I should be staying in a particular in a particular country. And what I've done is I've added in uh, the tax rates for say being overseas. So if I change the tax rates, he's going to be earning say significantly more than where he would be before. Um, maybe his tax rates are slightly, um, slightly less or considerably less, depending on what the country is. What's that going to do to um, his potential to, re to retire? So by uh, staying out an extra, extra year, he's retired. They've saved a little bit more money um, and they've just gone on half a year or, or so into the, into the future in terms of not running out of cash. So this is, how we, this is how we build a retirement plan for different individuals. Um, if we go into the, the retirement, we see we've got multiple streams of income. So we've got a state pension, we've got other income, we've got um, uh, conventional pension schemes, um, as well as sort of cash and everything else. Let's, um, let me change that back to a more realistic rate. Let's get rid of the red. So we'll go back to a goal of 50,000. There we go. So we've gone out. So actually, they're not actually getting into their pension schemes yet because that orange has now disappeared. So they can, they can just use their savings and investments and other income to fund their retirement into, in, into those later years. Um, we've, we can also add in certain gifts or milestone expenses, sorry, a gift. So if they want to give two gifts to their, their children, then they can do. And they might say, well, actually, let's add 100,000 to David. Okay, when can they do, when can they do that? How is that going to impact on their retirement? <clears throat> He's still fine. But if I add the same amount to Sally, he might run out of cash. Let's have a look. I think it might be all right. <clears throat> giving away 200,000 at age 71. So it's a big expense jump, right? You can see the total need jumping up, which is the expenses. So they're gifting away their, their amount. Um, they would actually, they would probably need to draw down more on those savings and investments into retirement. So if you're, if you're building your own retirement, think about, well, where's the income going to come from? What sources do I have? And then how do I, how do I make a, a big difference? Um, we talked about some of the things to think about, which was currency. So we could think about, okay, cash in, say, Singapore dollars or cash in US dollars, cash in, we, we use sterling for this example. You can use multiple different currencies. What is that? What's that going to do to you? And you have to make an assumption to say, well, I think the US dollar is going to weaken over X period or I think it's going to remain the same. How is that going to have an impact on the way that I'm drawing my income to pay for my retirement? We can go into loads of different detail on this and I can spend all day doing it um, because I generally quite enjoy it. Um, but if you want to get in contact with us, then this is how we will build the plans for you. Remember, investments are just a small part of your complete financial life. Um, and when we're building those plans, your financial life is generally the most important part, not just the investments. For us, wealth is the number of days you can survive without working whilst maintaining your preferred lifestyle. So we build financial plans. If you want to get in contact with me, email address, phone number, Twitter, it's pretty but LinkedIn. Facebook, everything, YouTube, by all means, please get in contact with me if you want a plan to be built. So thank you very much and hope you enjoyed the presentation. Hopefully speak to you soon.